You is get your it's your boy Ty back here with another video and in this video today guys we're gonna be going over and talking about the top 10 power forwards in NBA 2K23 my team now I want to start off this video by saying the power forward position might be the best position or the strongest position out there I, I th that's just my opinion on things I think the amount of good power forwards we have in my team right now is just absolutely ridiculous so briefly I'm going to be going over some guys that didn't make the list who I personally do indeed love so I or they're not necessarily that I love or that, that that I respect and are good okay hero Joel Embiid he's really solid did not make this list Keep moving down, Dwight Howard, really solid, didn't make the list. Hakeem Elijah one, really solid, did not make the list. Will Chamberlain, absolutely incredible, did not make this list. Moving uh, moving forward, uh, on to these next guys. Greg Oden, did not make the list. Uh, you know, Chris Bosh, pretty solid, did not make the list. Giannis, did not make the list, obviously, because he's, uh, in my opinion, a small forward for today's era. Mark Gasol, really good, didn't make this list. So, if your favorite power forward didn't make the list, that doesn't mean they are bad. I, it just basically means these power forwards are just too good and too elite in my team. Let's start it off at number 10 with Dark Matter Anthony Davis. Evoed up to 40 Hall of Fame. I just came down to this. Who do I prefer? Anthony Davis, Joel Embiid, I prefer Anthony Davis. Especially if you do give him 40 Hall of Famers. Now, the stat upgrades after the Evo aren't really much. I mean, free throw is nice block. Okay, sure, rebounding, yes, helps a little bit. Badge-wise, he gets quite a bit better. Off-ball pass, ankle braces, challenger, dimer, unpluckable, needle threader, rise up. Does get some really, really solid Hall of Famers. For me, the downfall with Anthony Davis is his base is still on quick. And that's the big thing. I think Anthony Davis's release on very quick is going to be smooth because it's straight up and down. It's not necessarily hard to green. Just needs to be sped up that little bit. And that's kind of what I'm waiting for. Anthony Davis on very quick is really what I'm wanting, what I'm hoping for. But still, this Anthony Davis is really solid. If I was a Lakers fan or a big time Anthony Davis fan, I would use this card and have some success with it. The other AD, nearly just as good, uh, especially with these same exact SIGs. At number nine, it's crazy this card is so low. Radiant David Robinson. And maybe at this stage of my team, I'm underrated him. I'm, 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 I have him underrated. But my whole thing is this. The card came out on February 24th, okay? So if a card is that old and we're kind of due to get a new one, I'm not going to sit there and gas him. Even though D-Rob deserves all the gas in the world, I'm not going to sit there and hype him up any more than I have to. I used David Robinson for a very long time, especially a souped one, and I really do like the card. Starts with him being 7-1 with the 7-5 wingspan that has a good release. Those things by itself make for a really solid card in my team. 91 three ball, everything is basically at a 90 stat-wise. Defensively, absolutely elite. Shooting-wise, again, Give him limitless, those types of things, very solid. And then playmaking, solid enough as well. Again, you can make the case D-Rob is a top five power forward. And I don't think I would want to argue that necessary fact. Thing is, for me, D-Rob based on quick just isn't that quick for today's game. I think there are better power forwards in my team. D-Rob is still at number nine for me. At number eight. We're plugging in Dark Matter Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Now, one of the worst value cards in the entire game is Kareem. And honestly, the amount of people that probably locked in Kareem is why we got Manute Bull. Because they said, you know what? If people are going to lock in 3 million MT for Kareem, they'll probably lock in a ridiculous uh, for Manute Bull as well. And that's why we're in the position we're in. At any rate, okay? I'm not blaming anybody. This Kareem was really solid for a specific time. Why do I like him more than D-Rob? Hey, he's just going to be better defensively is really what it does come down to. I don't necessarily love Kareem's release. I think his release is very, very mid, very mediocre at best. But when it comes down to it, his defense is elite and nobody can argue that, right? Decent three ball as well as decent playmaking. I like Kareem. Obviously, didn't lock him in because his value is absolutely horrible. At number seven, 
We're plugging in the guy who I always compare to Kareem. That guy is the Kembe Matumbo. Now, are they exactly the same? No. They're a little bit different. Now, how are they different? Well, obviously, you know, Dikembe, I think, has a better release. Kareem, obviously, has a better overall three ball, more badges, stuff like that. It just really depends. I think Matumbo, obviously, is a card, again, with that I think has the smoother release. I've been use using Mitchell Robinson lately. I love Mitchell Robinson in his own right. It's a shame he can't play power forward. I like Dikembe that little bit more than Kareem. Again, not a good value play. I, 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 I got to tell you guys that he's not a good value player, but objectively, is the card good? Yes. I'm not going to sit here and, and lie to you guys. He's good. Again, just value-wise, could be definitely better. At number six, you know what I'm, put, I'm putting? I'm putting this guy at number six, Dark Matter Dirk. Initially, I had another guy at six, but I had to change it, right? I, I just, I couldn't. I, I, I had to change my list because I couldn't put the guy I wanted to this low, even though I wanted to. Here's the thing with Dirk. I have the card. I just actually put him up on the auction house. I like him. His release is probably the best on this overall power forward list. But look at his defensive stats and defensive badges. They're not great. And again, I'm not trying to slander Dirk because I think Dirk is solid in my team. But... Outside of his release, he just leaves that little bit to be desired for me. And again, it's not me slandering the card. That's not me saying you guys can't use him and have some success with him. Because I have been using him and having some success with him. It all comes down to, can you green with the Dirk Nowinski base? Or the, the Violita base, I should say. Or not. Can you green with Dirk or not? If you can green with him, his release nearly impossible to get a contest on. Which just leads for him to being one of the overall top power forwards in my team. Nisha had this guy at number four. He comes in at number five. That guy is Alonzo Mourning. You know, with just more height dropping, and I like Alonzo Mourning, he just loses a little bit of value. And with every large guy we get in my team, Alonzo just loses that little bit. I mean, it's not like it's a ton, but just that little bit. Alonzo is nearly a perfect card, though. If you go watch my Alonzo Mourning gameplay, you're going to be like, wow, this card is absolutely elite. And my whole thing is this. If you get Alonzo for free, you should run him. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. If you get this card for free, he should be ran for you, okay? It, it honestly is that simple of a concept. It is that easy. The problem is he can't play small forward and he's only 6'10". I do like his player, Motto player, but I think it's really solid in my team. But as far as an overall card is concerned, he just lacks a little bit of height. Initially, I had Chris Stapps lower than Alonzo, and then I'm like, you know what? I can't. KP is seven foot three, and for that, I just I can't put Alonzo Morning over KP, even though I want to. Like, even though I really want to, I, I just can't do it. KP comes in here at number four. Good release, seven three, can move a little bit, plays good defense, competes with the Taco Yao's Minutes of the world. I don't get how anybody can hate on a guy like Chris Depp's for Zings. Now, you don't have to think he's your favorite power forward in my team. I don't care about all that. That's fine. But if you hate on Chris Depp's for Zings, I got to know why. Because even his defense is absolutely elite. I love KP. He's just way too expensive in my team. At number three, Pink Diamond Taco Fall. And I know this is going to get a lot of people mad. But here's the deal. You give him a decent coach. And for the sake of this video, I'll just say Monty Williams. You give him a decent coach in which the three ball goes up, the speed goes up, you give him the right shoe. You can get a low 70s speed, okay? Low 80s three ball. Get him to play decent defense. You apply the right badges to him. How do you hate on Taco? We've got to remember the card is 7-6 with an immaculate player build. He's not just 7-6, yeah. He's 7-6 with the Taco Fall player build, which is crazy. And again, if you're going to be up against the minutes of the world, this card is so, so, so valuable in my team. As time goes on, this taco is just going to, again, become more and more valuable as we do go through it because we're only going to get taller players in my team. Taco's time is eventually going to come. But I'm telling you, as far as it's concerned right now, I'm not going to say he's a must-have, but if you do not have Manute Bull, don't have KP, Taco is nearly a must-have for you and your specific squad in my team. Coming to the top two, we're plugging in Bull Bull at number two. Is Bull Bull better at small forward or power forward? He's better at small forward, in my opinion. But if you have Bull Bull, and let's say your small forwards are, I, I'm just going to throw out some names. Let's say at small forward, you got like Tim Thomas and I don't know, whoever else. If you have to run Bull Bull at the four, it's not the end of the world. Bull Bull can hold it down at that four 
and you can have some success with the card. Now, again, one of the cheesier parts about him is if when you do play that small forward, obviously he's 7 2. This Bull Bull, obviously, up here at number two as well. Both the cards are absolutely elite. My whole thing with Bobo is he's basically a better version of Chris Stepps Porzingis. That's how I feel about Bobo. Moves better than KP. Player model is just as good, if not better. And uh, and again, I mean, I just think offensively, he does give you that little bit more. So for me, I'm not going to sit here and gas Bobo because the card is so expensive. And obviously, I am aware of that. Like, he is so expensive. The average person is never really going to get their hands on especially the hero Bobo. But when it comes down to your top power forwards in my team, Bobo is definitely there. And your top power forward in my team is probably going to be the guy that is number one in the center list. That is Dark Matter Manute Bowl. You don't have to love Manute. I don't love the fact that Manute's in the game. I don't love the fact that I'm ever going to have to play against this guy. But do I respect his stats, badges, animations, and just the eye test? Yes. Okay. Is he worth the, you know... 15, 10 million MT he's going for. No, I'll never sit here and make that case. You're spending $5,000 on this card. You're crazy. But he is that good. 7-7, seven, 8-5 seven, wingspan odd spots from everywhere on the court. 40 out of favors, 13 on gold. And again, let's say you just give him a decent coach. I'm not even going to say the best coach in the game. Decent coach. Speed, interior, perimeter goes up. You give him a defensive shoe, improve the three ball. You're going to love Manute Ball. Especially, again, if you do fully badge him up. Which, I, again, I would... Re if you lock in Manu and you don't badge him up, something's wrong with you, okay? I just got to say that. Because if you have if you have the 15 mil to lock in for Manu, you've got the 100k to badge him up. It honestly is that simple of a concept. That easy to understand. So, I do think Manu is our best power forward in my team. And that's my power forward list. Again, I think the power forward position right now in my team is so 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 strong and you guys can say i'm gassing it this and that but i really do think it's strong the fact that hakeem will d12 didn't make this list to me is just absolutely absurd because all of those cards can play at a very very high level i need to know your thoughts on this list down below in the comments who is i too high on too low on and ultimately who did i miss out on drop a like on the video guys subscribe if you are new as always man i love you guys and have a blessed day